Mindfulness Mode 96. We need to step out of the way, totally. Reach new heights of calm, focus, and happiness on Mindfulness Mode with me, your host, Bruce Langford. On Mindfulness Mode, we talk about how people from all walks of life have discovered mindfulness and how it's impacted their lives to help them become more calm, focused, and happy. Hey, Mindful Tribe, do you want to share mindfulness with your children? It can be so much fun for both of you. I have a free ebook I've written called 21 Ways to Practice Mindfulness with Your Child Every Day for 7 Minutes. Download it at mindfulnessmode.com slash 21 ways. Enter your name and email and you'll have it in no time. That's mindfulnessmode.com slash 21 ways. You're listening to Mindfulness Weekends with Bruce Langford, and today we're talking about nature, nature and mindfulness. And it's a beautiful weekend here in Canada, beautiful May long weekend. Oh, what a perfect weekend to get out into nature and to enjoy the trees and the grass and the earth and connect. And I can't think of a better person to be chatting with today than Hilda Larson. And you'll see why, because she really loves nature and she really connects with the earth and she encourages all of us to do the same. I found a quote that says this, see how nature Trees, flowers, grass grows in silence. See the stars, the moon, and the sun, how they move in silence. We need silence to be able to touch our souls. That's Mother Teresa. And we do need silence, don't we? And getting out into nature, the kind of silence we can get when we're out there, it may not be complete, total silence like we're in a vacuum. Of course it isn't, but it is silence compared to the noisiness of our busy world. And so just think of being quiet, enjoying nature, just not thinking about all the noise and just excluding yourself from that for a while to give yourself a break. Silence, silence silence. It feels so good. I'm really excited about the fact that we're almost hitting episode 100. So that really gets me pumped up because it's been it's been quite a journey since August 24th, 2015 when I started mindfulness mode. It's been really exciting. I've met so many amazing guests, and I think I've learned a lot about myself too. And thank you for connecting with me. So many of you have connected. It's been really good. If you want to connect with me, just go to Twitter at Bruce Lankford, B R U C E. L-A-N-G-F-O-R-D. And I'd love to get back to you. Maybe you have a request for a theme or for a guest or just a comment. Connect with me on Twitter. For episode 100, I have a special guest. And I think you're going to just love the episode because this person is so focused, so mindful, and yet has had struggles just like we all have and is willing to share, is willing to be vulnerable and to tell us, yeah, this was where I was back then. This is what I was like. This is what my life was like. And then these are the things I did. And this is how I got focused. And this is what I did. I am so excited as we lead up to episode 100. And I think that you are just going to learn so much from from him. He is a, an amazing guest. I want to keep it as a bit of a secret. I don't want to torment you. I don't want to drive you crazy. But I, I just think it's exciting to just kind of share a little bit as we lead up to episode 100. And as I continue to talk about nature today, I think of my childhood because I spent a lot of time in nature just taking that breath, riding my bike. I've spoken about this before, but just feeling the the, the presence of the leaves on the trees and the, the grass and the air just seems so different when you inhale the, the earth's air. I was going to say the earth's breath. 
It's just an amazing feeling to me. Just feel the magic in the air and the power in the breeze. Feel the energy of the plants, the bushes, and the trees. Let yourself be surrounded by nature at its best. Calm yourself, focus, and let magic do the rest. That's Sally Walker. And one last quote before I get into the chat with Hilda. Go into the wilderness. There you will find your own revelations. And I think when we go into the wilderness, we experience nature. That's Roxana Jones. So thanks for being with us today on Mindfulness Weekends. It's great to have you here. Hope you have a wonderful weekend. And I'm going to connect with Hilda, and I'll talk to you soon. Today, we have Hilda Larson here again. And Hilda was on episode 47 when we talked about gratitude. The episode was called Gratitude Will Put You in a Sense of Awareness Every Second. And I really enjoyed talking to Hilda back then. And I'm really looking forward to today's chat as we talk about mindfulness and nature. Nature is a focal point because Hilda really does have a close connection to nature. And she's just finished her new book. So we're going to talk about that. Hilda, good morning. Good morning, Bruce. And thank you for uh, having me back. My pleasure. Great to have you on the line today. So you must be so excited about your new book, From Hell to Inspired, A Journey from Severe Chronic Illness to Health and Vitality. Tell us about this journey to getting your book completed. Well, you know, Bruce, uh, when you live something like this, it's uh, been longstanding and yes. like the book says, it uh, felt like hell for many years. Yes. So not, you know, just thinking that this would ever be a book was just way out there for me and to be able to be in a space where I can share this and feel that I have the power to communicate it you know in a deta- detached manner not being you know left or sucked in the energy of um, of illness is just beyond blessing and uh it's like it was downloaded to me again for for several years i i started you know making notes and thinking this you know must be a book sometimes because people need to know this yeah they do but, for sure yeah but it was not until it was time that it just came to me and i just sat down and it just poured out of me in a couple of months and uh I'm very proud of the book. I think it turned out good. (laughs) Oh, you should be proud of it. And, you know, in your book, it makes me think of this quote. And the quote is this, Storms make trees take deeper roots. It's by Dolly Parton. And you really seem as though you've taken deeper roots. You've become stronger as a result of some of your many challenges. Would you agree with that? Oh, I I more than agree with that. It's it's. It's like, you know, you hear people say that I wouldn't be without it. They have gone through either illnesses or other tragic experiences in their life. And they say that I I wouldn't live without it because it changes you. And looking back, I really would not be without it, meaning I have grown so much that the person that I was before this happened um, is not who I would want to go back to. So what, you know, the trigger could be many, but definitely deeper roots, more awareness. So I agree 100%. Well, you know, so many of us would love to make the kind of transformation you've made. I mean, you really, like you say, you've become a different person. And I mean, you talk about it throughout your book, but tell us now, how do you think you did accomplish that transformation? Okay. Actually, it is not a transformation in a sense and I did not become a different person I just became more of who I always were that I didn't see or couldn't perceive uh, because my life was cluttered like most of us have a cluttered life you know it can be thoughts right. it could be emotions um, and what happened is that when something tragic like this happens it's everything that we think we are and that life is about that shatters So we can really come forth, meaning it's almost like we die completely in what we are living and the new can uh, can come. It's like it's like the phoenix, you know, raising from the ashes. That's what I feel happened to me. I died. I literally died. My body survived, but I died. 
Wow, what a description. And, you know, from your point of view, you don't see yourself as a different person. But from us looking at you and, and hearing your story, it seems like you are. I mean, you say you died and you're now living a different kind of life. Well, you know, you just seem to take things in stride. Like Latsu says, nature does not hurry, yet everything is accomplished. What's your suggestion about how we can be like nature? We can just be patient and know that everything will happen in stride. How do we do that through mindfulness? Mm -hmm. Well, Bruce, we are nature. And I think that's what you realize. Um, Once you take away everything that has disconnected you from nature, then you realize that you are nature. And being closer to nature then uh, is something that you really don't need as much as you might think because you really are close to it no matter where you are. As long as you are still breathing, you are breathing the same prana, electricity from the earth that everything else you know, that we live here together with is doing. So we're all connected in that same uh, sort of uh, connective uh, balance and energy of life. Let's jump right in and talk about those things that do take us away from our connection to nature. What are those things? Oh, definitely. Those are most everything that you see with the naked eye when you walk around in your life. It, it could even be your, your relationships because if it triggers emotions in you that makes you sad or, or upset in any way, it's taking you away from nature. If you are living in a house, it's taking you away from nature because you're walking around ungrounded. You don't have your feet on the ground. Uh, we have uh, all this electronics around us today, all the electromagnetic smog. You know, it comes from uh, high, high rises, wires, uh, Wi-Fi, cell phones, you know, microwaves, ovens, yes. anything. Flying, sitting in a car, driving. I mean, most of what we do is actually, con- you know, disconnecting us um, energetically, like I said, you know, towards stress and stuff like that, even though we cannot be really disconnected but you know what i'm saying so yes. so just living today is a challenge for the human being you know we are a species that are meant to live in the tropics we don't have fur we have hands to pick our foods we're meant to live like the chimpanzees like the other primates and we have surrounded ourselves by using our brain and trying to kind of tear everything apart to see how everything works and to build we have put ourselves in a situation that is actually hurting us. Wow. Well, let's talk about how we do connect with the earth. When I know when you walk, every footstep you feel the connection. And so is that the first step to feel that connection to the earth and to nature? Well, yes. I, I think the first step is 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 to honor nature, to actually take a look around and look at a flower and a tree and just honor it and, and try to get that feeling inside of you, which feels connected to all of that and to be, to be grateful and to thank God for that creation, because we are very much um, in need of every single you know, bit of it. If it wasn't for that, we couldn't, you know, anything, nothing could live on the earth. And, and as long as you, you see that you will automatically be drawn to, you know, get closer to it. But as far as a physical thing for the physical body, because there are always, as you know, Bruce, you know, more than just the physical, we have the emotional and the spiritual and yes. so many bodies going on. But definitely taking your shoes off and putting your bare feet on the ground, what happens then is that you get connected through the negative ions that the bo- that the earth emanates. So you are, even physically, you can... You can hook up to a device that will prove that you are getting health benefits from connecting. So it could be through your feet, but you could also just touch a tree or hug a tree. You know, and anytime you work in the garden, that's why it feels so serene. And it feels so serene to be on the beach or to swim in the ocean. It's because we are embraced by the negative ions, which nails out all those positive ions that comes from electromagnetic smog. Uh, and what we have in the air around us in a stressful life. So it's very much a physical, physical thing. 
Yeah, so let's talk about your arthritis. That was one of the central problems that you dealt with, your rheumatoid arthritis. Mm -hmm. And what do you think was the primary cause? I know that there were a number of causes that you've talked about in the book, but just tell Mindful Tribe today, what do you think were some of the main causes? Well, you know what? Actually, no matter what imbalance you have in the body, rheumatoid arthritis, MS, diabetes, whatever there is a label, you know, put on it from the medical industry, it's actually all the same time, same thing. It's a body that is overloaded with acidity, meaning toxicity, and weak organs and glands. So when the body is not up for the task of getting rid of everything that we put in, that we think, that we feel, that we are bombarding ourselves with, it shows symptoms of imbalance, and that's all that sickness really is because nature is perfect, and the body is just trying at all times to heal itself at all times. Your body will never do anything to you that is not in your best interest from the body's and healing's stand of point. Right. So when my body was showing me all these this inflammation, it was in turn only trying to protect me from all the toxins by putting inflammation out there, which is actually just a natural response to acids. I had no idea about this, of course, back yes. then. Um, but looking back, and, and this is why nature is so perfect, because you really don't need to be that smart. And you don't really need to be, you know, like a rocket science. You know, nature is pretty simple. You know, you get out of the way, you, you stop what's hurting you, and restoration is, is inevitable. It's actually inevitable. Well, it does really feel amazing to get out there with the trees and with the river and with the earth. And I've always wondered why it feels so good, but it just does. And you just seem to be able to communicate that message with us through your book. So tell me about the journey of writing this book. Like you already said, it almost wrote itself. What was that like? It, it, did, wrote, it did write itself. Last fall, I got this you know, I got this awakening to that it needed to come out. So right. I just cleared my calendar, January, February, March. I totally cleared it. Mm -hmm. And I told anyone around me, I said, I'm going to eat and I'm going to sleep and I'm going to write. And that's what I'm going to do. So, you know, don't, you know, don't call me, don't, you know, anything. That's what I'm going to do. And that's what I actually did. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was so eager. I was so inspired. It was, it was like a download. It was like all the memory, everything just came flooding. And I just kept typing and typing and typing and typing. So... So this would have been therapy for you, the, just the writing process itself. Is that right? Well, yeah, I think you could put it that way. But in another sense, I think actually the book wasn't ready to come out before I had detached myself from the story. Right. So now writing everything, I could actually write it without having any feelings attached to it. Tell us about some of the amazing feedback you've had as a result of writing the book. Oh, it's been amazing. And people are waiting for the second book. And, you know, can you imagine? Well, I think you might be able to imagine since yes. you're podcasting and, and sharing with people. But when you touch someone's lives to the point where they come back to you and tell you that because of you, they now have a better life. It, it's such a it's, it's a blessing that just, you know, feeds you beyond food or anything to keep going, because that truly and passionately is you know, my mission and, and my passion. I really feel that this is why I went through this, to be able to share and to inspire others to take their power back and to take their uh, connection to nature back to the sense where they can feel totally at ease and at peace with God and, and the universe. Yeah, it really is an amazing feeling to have people give you that kind of feedback, mm -hmm. that's for sure. Well, can you give us, Hilda, a little bit of a glimpse into your next book? Well, this book that we're talking about, From Hell to Inspired, is definitely my journey because it is a story that needs to be told. So when I wrote that, I realized that there wasn't that much room for the specifics, like the specific recipes. And I have been on Facebook for years, and I answer people and answer people because they want to know exactly what I mean about this and that and what I did specifically, you know, on all levels. I'm talking physically, mentally. So I 
figured that I needed to put together a second book, which is called Know the Truth and Get Healthy, a step-by-step guide to health and vitality. So that is a freestanding book where I have put together all my knowledge on healing, on protocols, on recipes, because, you know, I make everything myself from skin cream to I don't touch anything else, you know, and, and I think that was also, you know, very valuable for me to be able to put together like that because I was challenging myself to go through my own knowledge and to kind of put things into more of a narrow path instead of being all over the place. So that is a very good thing to hold, you know, between two covers. And I can present that to one person and say, here, you know, instead of going to someone or uh, having, you know, very, you know, and and a lot of people, they don't have the money for uh, expensive consults. You know, they just need somewhere to go. And for, you know, for a reasonable price, now you can have this book on your shelf. And to me, I hope it's going to be more like one that you will go back to, you know, looking for things. And well, I'm sure it will be. Follow it. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like a great reference. Why is it, Hilda, that, you know, nature provides so many delicious foods to eat. And yet we as human beings, we want to take those foods and do all these things to them. I mean, the least of which is is boil them, steam them. I mean, a lot of the foods I just I just enjoy a lot more just in the natural state without even boiling or steaming them. But a lot of my friends don't agree. Why? Why is that? Oh, what a great topic. Well, why is that? My belief is that we are so disconnected through programming and emotional imbalances and addictions that we are drawn to kind of what is holding us in that place. So that could be anything from what you grew up with eating, you know, and you're connected with that because it it might have felt, you know, you, you, you felt, felt good. You have the sure. smell of the little uh, buns that your grandma used to make, and that makes you feel good. And then you start eating that. And then you know what, Bruce? Those things are feeding the parasites and the fungus. And once those things get going, they are hard to deny their food. They really are telling you they want their fix. So literally, we're talking about strong addictions, sugar, gluten, Cooked food even is very addictive to the, to the human body, very sadly. And then when you, you, you see what the consumers are presented with today when you go into a supermarket, right. you know, even the eyes are addicted to the colors and the boxes and the way that, you know, they make it smell. Yes. So it is, it is a huge concern for, for mankind the way that the food industry has been now made into an addiction addiction, you know, like an yes. addictive industry where we are pointed in the direction away from nature, where we should be going to the farmer's market or we should be going, you know, to the farm actually and, right. and pick the food ourselves, you know, in a perfect world, because that is what we're meant yeah. to eat. You yeah. know, it's just a huge sales job, isn't it? Every time you go in the grocery store and you see all these processed, processed foods and boxes and boxes of things in the in the freezer sections, and you know that they're all p- containing, they're all processed foods, or I at know. least containing processed. They're and all processed. Ask you, you know, what should I look for in the label? And I'm just like, don't buy anything with a label. <laughs> yeah, right. It's not about the what label. What are you telling me? You know, <laughs> you know, you have an apple, it doesn't have need a label to say apple. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Buy a head of cauliflower, a head of uh, broccoli or something. It right. doesn't have a label. <laughs> yeah. I know. And so even it's... those, but even those foods are altered. Let's talk right. about that. Nature offers those foods to us in their natural form, dishes them up. Then we as mankind, we go and think, oh, I've got a better idea. Let's alter these foods. Let's talk about that. Well, you know, sadly, that is kind of a whole story for itself. And now we're talking about money and power because now we're talking about man that gets greedy, that wants more out of the crop, that wants to be able to ship it further. It it has to be, you know, sit longer. They pick it unripe because it has to sit so long and then they spray it again or inject them to ripen them. And then, Mm -hmm. you know, that's not really ripening, that's fermenting. And so that's hurting us and they're dipping it in wax and spraying it with God knows what. Oh, I know. So... You know, sadly, yes. I mean, the the 
the regular person down the street, I mean, even thinking that they're going to the produce department and getting healthy food, they could have been feeding their family with a lot of neurotoxins yes. from herbicides and pesticides and fungicides. And I don't know, almost like you call it for suicides, you know. I know. And even even organic foods that are labeled organic foods, are they always like completely safe and, and free of these kinds of things? You know, Bruce? Who knows? Yes. I mean, there is just no way of knowing. Me personally, I buy organic knowing or believing at least that that is the best that I can sure. do when I need sure. to buy something. But truly, what I have found by going into nature and even in Norway, which I live where I live most of the year, yeah. you know, which is a colder climate, just just the gift of being able to pick a dandelion or stinging nettle or plantain from the ground is free it is so filled with nutrients i mean you could probably eat like three or four whole heads of lettuce compared to four or five little stalks of of uh, dandelion that i pick from the ground just from being wild you know it's never been altered it's never been grown in soil that has been you know washed down by doing the same thing year after year and um I am trying to guide people to kind of disconnect from that whole food system because once you try to little, do a little better within it, you're still hooked and imprisoned by the notion that you need um, to uh, purchase and you need to go after what is presented to you right there and then. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So if you can free yourself by just looking around where you live because I know for a fact that unless you're on – the South Pole or somewhere sitting on just ice, there is always something that you can pick, you know, during during the year. So you just need to educate yourself because when I am in Florida, I can go to an orange farm or a coconut farm or wherever and, and I can speak to the farmer and I can get my, my food. I can buy once a week, you know, and, and get it to my place. But when I am in Nor in Norway, I can't do that. But when I'm but being creative, I know that I can pick my greens the whole summer and I can dry it and I have my own private green powder. I can go into the ocean, which I do, and pick my own kelp. Well, I was just going to talk to you about what you grow personally and what you can pick. So you pick kelp out of the ocean. And, and what else? I pick kelp out of the ocean and then I pick all the greens that I find in the forest, which are the dandelions, stinging nettle, plantain, you have uh, clover, uh, oh, there are so many, and all depending on where you are, you know, they are. You, you can buy books on this. I mean, this right. is out there. It's very right. easy to find the flora where you are, and I always tell people find someone that knows their stuff. Just okay. don't buy a book and go out there because there are things that we're not supposed to eat. You know, right. I don't want you to get poisoned. No, but you know, you get educated on that, and then I have the wild berries. I mean, the northern climates are fantastic when it comes to berries. There is nowhere else on the planet which has as good berries as the northern uh, parts. So you can pick them, eat them all summer, and you can freeze them during the winter. We just have to do the best with what we can. Of There's course. All, you can always do the best. And people say, well, I don't have this and that. Well, do you have that? Yeah. Well, okay, do that then. Do a little better. As long as you do better, then you're on the right path, and, and the rest will show itself to you. Oh, yeah, for sure. So tell us what you do with dandelion. Do you eat the leaves or do you eat the roots or both? You can you can eat the roots, you can eat the leaves, you can eat the flower, you can eat anything. You can take the root. The root is actually used often as a coffee substitute. They roast the root and they grind it, and apparently it tastes like coffee. I never wow. tasted that because I only use the raw. Um, but what I do personally is I pick the raw leaves. I put them fresh just like that in my smoothie. Right. And I dry them, so I always pick a little more than I need. So mm -hmm. I dry them. And um, I save it for winter. I have my little Nutribullet, and it's perfect just to put the dried leaves right into there. I, I dry them in a dih dihydrator. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have that, you can just put them in your garage or anywhere dry, just on uh, some um, newspapers. Or you can put them up underneath the ceiling, just hang it, you know, from a little thread. So there's many ways you can dry uh, your uh, your herbs or sure. your wild greens. And what about stinging nettle? I've never eaten that. Oh, what part is it? Is it the leaves you eat? Usually? Yeah, the leaves and a little. You can use a little bit of stems if you're drying it, but they're mm -hmm. more. Uh, they're not. Uh, they're very much very harsh in fiber. So if mm -hmm. you're just going to eat it fresh, I would say the leaves. And people ask me, well, doesn't it sting raw? 
and you know once you get that moist it doesn't sting at all i just put mm-hmm. the fresh sting and nettles right into my smoothies Wow, that sounds so delicious. And wild yeah. berries. Like, I haven't really seen a lot of wild berries around here. What kinds of berries do you find, Hilda? Well, I find uh, raspberries okay. and um, blackberries, mostly wild. But where I come from, the currants, the black currants, the red currants, and the strawberries uh, are very, very common to have, you know, in gardens and little parks. Yeah. And so usually, if you talk to someone, or talk around. I was just telling my husband about this. You know what? There are so many people that has apple trees or plums or pears or whatever mm-hmm. in their garden or at their summer place, and it's never picked. Right. We should all get together. Maybe we could trade, you know, or at least if you have something, you know, advertise to say if somebody wants to come, you know, pick my apples, you know, feel free. Right. Because it's a shame that any good homegrown authentic food should go with the waste. This is this is this is my vision. Let's. Let's plant flu- fruit trees in every single park. Let's forget all about the trees that are, you know, let's plant fruit trees, free fruit for all. I mean, well, that would be something. And so then what would happen when the insects come and their disease and everything? I mean, man thinks, oh, we, we have to spray. We have to spray. Right. Isn't that what would happen? And you know what? It's not. That, yeah. is, that is exactly what, not, what would not happen. Nature is perfect. Go into nature and see. Everything is connected. When the bugs come, it's because we, the humans, have created an imbalance. Oh. So I guess that makes sense. They grow things today. They deplete in one thing and they start spraying for something. Then something else comes in. We have imbalanced the perfect ecosystem. Well, that does make sense. Aren't we so far gone with that imbalance that it's really tough to figure out how to backtrack? We need to step out of the way. I think that, I mean, there are, you know, alternative growers today that are going back to growing the natural way. I mean, they don't pick weed. They don't do anything. They let nature provide, you know, how it's supposed to be. But of course. Oh, sure, we can go back, but we need to step out of the way totally, you know, and, and, uh, and, um. And the challenge is the the eagerness for profit and power because I think for a while there you'll have to go back to being concerned with nature and what you're producing and not as much the profit and the size of the crop. And, uh, and that is where we need to be more aware. Yeah, we really do. Well, you know, you've done a great service and you, you have so much passion with sharing. I mean, sharing all of this in your book and, and I know you're on YouTube with different messages and so on. But thank you so much for putting this book together and sharing with us in this new book, Know the Truth, Get Healthy. Oh, Know the Truth and Get Healthy, a step-by-step yeah. guide to health and vitality. That's really going to be a great resource book for us all to use. Well, that is that is what I hope. It just came out and it needed to come out. And I feel really good that I can present this, you know, to anyone um, without them having to track me down. Or, you know, sometimes I feel like I can't reach everyone, you know, uh, sure. and, and I, I would like to maybe explain more to them. And, you know, this way they can get the book and, and um, yeah, hopefully it will benefit many. I mean, that is my dream. It is such... <laughs> a heartache for me to see all the suffering that is out there when I feel that I have kind of withdrawn from that and can see it more from the outside, you know, and to see that there is a perfectly, naturally God-given solution as there is to everything. This is about compassion for life. This is about positive thinking this is about being mindful and grateful and connecting to who you are that's really all that this is and what i have put together is just all the little tools that'll make it easier for you to go down that road so when do you expect this book will be published i expect it to be out in not more than two to three weeks bro so this is really exciting so that will be in 
June then? June 2016? That will be in June. That will absolutely be in June. Okay. That's great. Well, it's so exciting, you know, to know that you have your story out there with your your current book, From Hell to Inspired, A Journey from Severe Chronic Illness to Health and Vitality, because it is an amazing journey that you've been on. And it, it's really compelling to hear you tell that story. So thanks for doing that. And thanks for coming on the show today, Hilda. Well, thank you for having me. It's such a pleasure. And I feel honored that you will you know, open this channel for me to speak so that even more can uh, can feel better soon. That's what I want, us all to feel better. Absolutely. And Hilda, besides your books, how can Mindful Tribe reach out to you and connect with you? Well, my website is uh, coming along and, and being such a resourceful place. So I advise everyone to go to inspiredbyhilda.com. And I've made it pretty easy, I think, because everything that I do, if it's on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, you can find me under Inspired by Hilda. So that is my branding name, you can call it. And on my website, you can find, you know, your uh, podcast, the other one. You can find um, the videos that I make. You know, I have a resource called Media Page, you know, so there's a lot of free stuff there for you. I had two little ebooks that you can download for free even on my webpage one on essential oils and one that's called um power up that has a lot of just positive uh, quotes and little writings from me in it um and yeah and there's a buttons there connect with me so you, sure. don't, you know you don't have to worry about it you just connect sure. me through the website sure and i want to point out it's hilda h-i-l-d-e yeah and so there's no a in there it's h-i-l-d-e inspired by hilda Dot com. Check it out. Thank you so much for joining us this weekend. You have a wonderful weekend and all the best to you, Hilda. Thank you so much, Bruce. Namaste. Thank Bye you. now. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today on Mindfulness Mode. For insightful blog articles and show notes for every episode, check out mindfulnessmode.com. If you've enjoyed this podcast, you could help us out by clicking on the iTunes link on our website and leave a rating and review. Till next time, Mindful Tribe, use what we've learned today to reach new heights of calm, focus, and happiness. Stay in the mode.